all that. Um, this is a distraction-free zone. So turn your stuff off, right? Close those tabs. And let's welcome again, Alex, who, Alex, I'm so glad you kept your blueberry hair. <laughs> Alex was trying to go brunette and her yeah. hairdresser was not having it. Nope, I got talked out of it. So we're doing like a brown ombre into blue moment. Mermaid sort of thing happening. <laughs> I love this. So Alex, who is Alex? Well, I've already told you she's my main squeeze. She is... Listen, this is no exaggeration. In my opinion, she is the best copywriter walking this planet, okay? She is a copywriter, ghostwriter, communication consultant. How many books have you written, Alex? Um, of my own books, like novels and nonfiction, I've written six books of my own, and then I've probably ghostwritten about a dozen books um, for clients as well. Oh, she's like, do you mean the ones with my name on it or the <laughs> ones that I didn't actually get credit for, but were bestsellers, right? So yeah. <laughs> she also started in a publishing imprint in her spare time. Um, and you call yourself an email nerd, which I love. I am. It's true. It's true. She writes the best emails and texts and really anything. So uh, Alex and I have a full hour for you. We're gonna talk about some things that we promised and we're also gonna tell you about this email mini challenge we have going on. But also at the end of today's webinar, we're gonna talk about the email course that will be for sale at the end of the challenge. You can actually sign up now, so we'll tell you how to do that. But Alex, Let's yeah. start and let's talk about why emails are even more important than we might realize. Yes. Okay. So one person mentioned in the comments, they're having a hard time hearing me. Is that still the case? Just wanted to check and see. Let me know in the comments. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Or having issues. You can hear fine. Great. Okay. It was a temporary mm. Hawaii blip. <laughs> Um, so why are emails even more important today than ever before? Before I dive in, Susan, thank you for the beautiful introduction. You are amazing. And I want to tell the truth. I too have nightmares about losing <laughs> you, mostly as a friend, and I hope that's never the case. Let's just keep partying until the end of time. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay, so why your emails are even more important than you might realize, even more important than ever before. I'm going to share a couple of statistics with y'all, and we'll go through what each of those mean for you. So some current statistics. These are 2020 statistics. Most working professionals today now read and reply to 126 emails per day. 126. That is a lot of emails. <laughs> That's a lot of messages coming at you, leaving your inbox. Share in the comments, does that number sound about right for you? Maybe it's more for you, maybe it's less for you, but 126 is the average nowadays. Most Americans are exposed to about 4,000 to 10,000 advertisements and marketing messages, including marketing emails every day, four to 10,000 messages. And back in the 1970s, a couple of decades ago, it was only about 500 to 1,500 marketing messages a day. So what we can glean from that is that since the 70s to today, there's just more noise, there's more activity, there's more messages coming at you, coming at you, coming at you, to the point where you might be exposed to 10,000 marketing messages every single day. And some of these are super quick, right? You're scrolling on Instagram and it's just a quick little ad that pops up, but it's still there and it's coming at you. So again, what we learn from this is now more than ever in such a noisy, busy, busy landscape, it's so important that your emails are clear, intentional, beautiful, exciting, and that they pop. 
somebody asks, can you share the source for those stats? Totally, we could email that to you after this class. I have a, a compendium of them, so I'll make a note of that. It's very interesting to look into this stuff. A compendium. You have a compendium. I would say I got a shitload of sources, so just hold yeah. tight. But you know, Alex is Alex. She's got a compendium. Oh yes, absolutely. Okay, so a couple of other stats. Nowadays, it's been reported that the average length of time that somebody spends reading an email is only about 13 seconds. So most people are just very quickly skimming. And then maybe you go back later and you read a little in a little more detail and depth, but that initial scan is real quick, right? You're just, you're on your phone, you're on your computer, quick skim, and then you decide archive, delete, save, whatever. I'm sure many of you can relate to this, right? So again, with such a small amount of time to really captivate someone's attention, you really need your email to be on point right? You do not have time to waste. You cannot afford to be vague or long-winded or boring or irritatingly pushy either. You have to strike the right tone and have the right language so that during that precious 13-second window, you are really captivating someone's attention in a positive way, okay? So a couple of other situations that are happening in our world right now there's a global pandemic in case you haven't heard and people are in my opinion more distracted and more stressed than ever before i certainly have felt that way many times throughout the last couple of months i'm sure you have too there's some heavy stuff going on people are stressed people are overloaded people have a lot on their mind and I've seen statistics that say, when you are intensely stressed, your IQ temporarily drops by about 10 to 13 points. So what that means is when you're stressed, you're not thinking clearly. It's hard for you to read, it's hard for you to process information, it's hard for you to make a decision. So all the more reason in this time of exceptional stress and uncertainty, when your email recipient might be operating at an IQ deficiency, you need to make your email exceptionally clear and precise and easy to understand. You don't want your email to be taxing on their already taxed brain right? So consider, I'm sending an email to someone who's already stressed out and overwhelmed. How can I make this email inc incredibly clear and precise and easy on them? So another issue that we're noticing in the pandemic, of course, is that many of the ways that perhaps you've typically marketed yourself or promoted yourself in the past don't really work right now. I know Susan, for example, a big part of her marketing plan last year was live events. She did a book tour, she did workshops, she did her Girlfriends Gone Wild dinner parties. She did Girlfriends Gone Wild, was that what it was called? Girlfriends Gone Wild? Girlfriends Gone, yeah. Girlfriends yeah. Gone Wild. <laughs> yeah, Instead and of she, Girls Gone Wild, there was no, gone oh, well, at least not on camera. Exactly. And so she did all kinds of live events and she went all around the country doing live events and that's where she would sell her books. That's where she would sell her programs. That's where she would build relationships with potential clients who would then go on to hire her for high level coaching programs. This year, all live events canceled. So, and this is the case for so many people, right? Book tour, not happening. Live events, canceled. Conference, postponed. A lot of the things, even going out for coffee to meet with someone face-to-face, -face, uh, they might not be willing or available. So now more than ever, since we have fewer options at our disposal, the ones that we do have, social media, website, email, Zoom, etc we need to use them exceptionally well. So the, the resources that you do have to market yourself, you need to be doing it excellently. And email is one of the very, very best marketing tools at your disposal. So to reiterate, and we can email you the sources for all of these stats later, most people are getting over 100 emails a day. Most people are exposed to thousands of marketing messages every day. Uh, the world is noisy, the world is stressful, the world is overwhelming for many people, which is why 
your emails need to be exceptionally clear, brief, loving, precise. Your email, whatever it's about, selling your work, inviting someone to hire you or enroll or whatever, your email, you want it to be the best email they've gotten all day long. You want to be that person who writes such amazing emails that when people see your name pop up in their inbox, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to read it because I know it's going to be great. If you can establish that kind of reputation for yourself, it's totally game changing, life changing. It will definitely change your marketing, your sales, your income, all the things. So Susan, that's my lowdown on why emails are even more important today than ever before. <laughs> It's so true and everything that you said and and for sure I know many of you probably are here uh because the world has changed and because you're noticing um the way people are responding to promotional materials has changed and so you know an advantage that I've had for years is learning from Alex and having Alex write emails that get opened by my people. Many of you are here because you read the email that we sent out that said, hey, we're doing this thing. So proof. Yeah, everybody, everybody that I talk to about Alex say, oh, she's the only email that I read. That's so kind. And I, I'm noticing like so many kind words in the comments right now. People saying, I love Susan's emails. I love Alex's emails. People have said to me, which is so beautiful, people have said like, your email is the only email I look forward to receiving. I always open your newsletter whenever it comes through, that kind of thing. And what I wanna to convey to everyone here today is you can be that person too. You can be that person who writes emails that are so warm, so loving, so beautiful, so helpful, so generous, that people truly can't wait to get emails from you emails that you feel great sending and they feel great receiving and that lead to the results that you want. So this isn't like a magic power that only I have. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can become that kind of email sender as well. And we're gonna talk right now about a couple of simple ways to do that. So I wanted to share a couple of quick tips and tricks to help you overcome writer's block and just start writing better emails immediately. So even without any extensive training or templates, what are some quick things that you could implement right now that would make your emails better, better than before? So writer's block, what do we mean by that? That means you're sitting down to write an email. Let's say you have a program that you wanna promote and sell, or you have some coaching services and you're looking for a couple more clients, or you're trying to write your weekly newsletter that goes out every Sunday, except you haven't sent it for a couple of weeks <laughs> because you've been really busy and it's overwhelming to write. So you're feeling stuck, you're staring at that blank screen and you're wondering, oh, what should I say? So one of the main things that I believe causes that overwhelmed, stuck, blocked feeling is actually distractions. Distractions, interruptions. So consider when you sit down at your workspace to craft an email, are you working in a truly peaceful, serene, protected, uninterrupted environment? Or are you working in an environment where social media notifications are going off, your phone is blowing up with text messages, your children and spouse feel free to knock at the door at any moment, you've got your emails open. What's your environment like? This is crucially important because when you are working in an environment where you're being distracted three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times an hour, Every single time that you're distracted, it, even if it's just a five minute distraction, it's really not. It's really so much more than that because it pulls your brain power away from the deep work of writing that you were trying to do. So honestly, the first thing you can do to become a better writer immediately is just to block distractions completely. 
people are mentioning it's so hard when working from home. I know, I totally relate. I don't even have kids and it's hard for me too. So those of you who are parents, you are truly superheroes, but you've just got to do it. And this involves doing things that maybe you've never done before. It involves closing the door. It involves having a tough conversation with your housemates or spouse or kids and saying, I love you, but I need you to know every time you interrupt me, it means my workday becomes 30 minutes longer because it takes me so much longer to get back into my groove. So if you want mom to be finished with work at 4 p.m. so we can play, you really need to leave me alone so that I can finish writing this email. So it's having conversations like that and being very, very disciplined in a loving way with your environment. Email off, phone off, social media off. You just have to clear the space. When you do this, you will be able to unlock mental resources that were previously unavailable. You will feel smarter. You will feel more creative. You will be able to get into that flow much more easily. And even without doing anything else, you will automatically become a better writer when you can focus. <laughs> so take a really good, honest look at how you approach your workday, particularly writing. And be honest with yourself, do an assessment. How many interruptions or distractions are coming at you per hour when you're trying to write an email and start to deal with some of those. It will make such a difference and you will feel so much better. Oh my gosh. Susan, do you have an example of a time when you had to like fiercely block <laughs> a distraction from your space? <laughs> yesterday um, so so I I talk about having uh, business hours with boundaries yeah um, and I, you know I have worked from home building this company for over 13 years and my kids were little when I started and I legit had conversations with them like listen you better be bleeding or something better be on fire for you to, <laughs> you to be coming on in here. Um, and it, just yesterday, Ryan Hyatt shows up with the new grand puppy. I hear it's like 3.45. I typically work till say 4.30, 5 o'clock. I hear the thump, the thump, the thump. They bust in. Oh, so cute. And guess what? Like now I'm not going to get my stuff done. So I sent a text before this webinar started. Remember, don't be dropping by before 5 15 p.m because mama still working you've been learning this lesson since you were eight years old <laughs> so. yes. yes so i i'll need to find the exact number for this one but yet another statistic i'm all about the stats there was a study done on you know how many times is it is a typical office worker or professional interrupted every single workday and it's a crazy number of interruptions it's every time the phone rings every time a text comes in every time an email notification on your desktop all those things and then they tabulated so what is the cost of all those interruptions and distractions. They're all so small, right? It seems like it's not really a big deal if someone comes and knocks on your door to chat for three minutes, but it actually is a big deal because all of those interruptions and distractions add up. They're very mentally taxing. They make it difficult to get into a creative flow and actually access your full brain power. And every time you are interrupted or distracted, it takes you often about 20 to 25 minutes to just re-enter and refocus on whatever project you were working on before. So if you're just trying to write one quick little email <laughs> to promote your new program, but you're interrupted three times while you're doing it, that's 20, 23, 25 minutes every single time you're interrupted. So now this email that should have taken 10 minutes to write is taking you, what, 90 minutes, two hours? And a compound on top of that, that you might be feeling insecure or anxious, maybe you have anxiety about selling to begin with, it's a whole mess. So <laughs> again, to reiterate, clear distractions, be fierce about this. Fierce like a mama lion protecting her cubs. That's how you need to protect your time, your space, your brain power, so that you can have every possible advantage in writing excellent emails. 
okay? So maybe share in the comments, what is one change, big or small, that you could put into place immediately, like right when this class ends, to protect your time, protect your brain power a little bit more? Put one idea into the comments. I would love to see, and I know Susan would too. Hide your phone, <laughs> post your hours, I love that. Close email, all notifications off. Yes, noise canceling headphones, hallelujah. Those are a lifesaver. <laughs> Put the dog in the crate. <laughs> yes, oh my gosh, these are so good. And I love the do not disturb sign. And then it feels like you're working in a hotel, which is kind of sexy and fun. <laughs> love it. Wonderful. Yeah, the conversations with family are sometimes the hardest of all, but also so important. These are well, great ideas. And I think that if you don't talk to, although Scott Hyatt's on here and I've talked to him five minutes, he, he hear this, Scott? There are stats behind why I'm like, why are you home? Why are you coming in here and disrupting me with your nonsense? <laughs> right? You've got to have these conversations because listen, if you don't take your work and your writing seriously, nobody will. And they're still, even if you take it seriously, I love you. Um, they're still going to act like fools. Okay. So you got to lay down these boundaries because you're never going to get hundreds of thousands of dollars coming in the door if you're not setting proper boundaries and ass in seat for the writing. Anyway, go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's very, very true. Okay. So another issue, another thing that causes writer's block or that causes your writing to just not flow or not feel as powerful as it could be is, I would say, low confidence. So feeling, it's that feeling of like, let's say, for example, you're a coach, you have a coaching program, you love coaching, you're good at it, you need to send an email to invite a client to hire you, or you need to send a newsletter to announce your program, you start to write it, but before you click send, that wave of insecurity comes over you. And you start thinking things like, um, now's not the right time, there's a pandemic, I shouldn't be selling anything, um, it's not the right time to ask people for money, or I don't want to bother them, you know, I don't want to pester them with this announcement, or maybe I'll wait till next week, or, you know, actually screw that, I'll just wait till next year, I, I'm just, it's not, it doesn't feel right right now to be selling or marketing anything. You start to have that wave of anxiety, and that anxiety can take so many forms, right? Sometimes it's the fear that they will say yes. Sometimes it's the fear that five people will say, great, sign me up. And now, shit, now you actually have to deliver, right? And what if they're not happy with your services? Or, you know, our brains can just go in a million different fearful directions. So this is a big one. And this is something that as a coach, Susan is so extraordinary at coaching people through their mindset and attitude issues, right? So there's so much that could be said about building a better mindset, but really briefly, the biggest thing that has helped me in this regard is becoming or choosing to become what I call a day maker, a day maker. A day maker, and there's a beautiful book by David Wagner called My Life as a Day Maker that you should all read. We can send the link to you, making a note. So what does it mean to be a day maker? It means that you are someone who through everything that you do, through your work, through your conversations, through the way you show up for your kids, through the emails you send, your goal is to make someone's day better than it was before. You are showing up in their inbox to brighten their day, to share something generous, to share something valuable, to make them smile, to make them laugh, to make them think, to provide perhaps a beautiful audio meditation that allows them to exhale. So every single email you send, whether you are just checking in on a friend or you're selling an offer or whatever it is that you're doing, your primary intention is, I'm gonna be a day maker. I'm gonna make my email recipients day better than it was before. In fact, I'm gonna try to make my email the best email they've gotten all week, all month all year. And whether you are actively selling something or not, 
you can always be a day maker. There are so many creative ways to do this. For example, you could send an email where you're selling your program. And as a PS, you could also include an amazing music playlist that you put together to brighten people's day and get the energy going. Or if you're selling tickets to an event, as a PS, you could also say, hey, if you're unable to travel right now, here's a little free treat for you. So there are so many ways that you can be a day maker through your emails. And when you take this approach, it changes everything because then you feel confident sending your email. You know, no matter what, whether they sign up for my program or hire me or not, I know that I have brightened their day in some way, big or small. And that usually gives you that little burst of confidence and courage that you need to just click send. <laughs> so I would love to hear before we move on to the last bit, what is one way through your emails that you could be a day maker for your recipients, for your clients, for your audience, for your subscribers? How could you be a day maker? You could send a guided audio meditation that helps them to de-stress and have a better day. You could send a music playlist. You could send a, an inspiring story that makes them cry and think about the world differently. You could sell an offer and also offer a tiny free version for those who aren't able to sign up right now this moment. You can also be a day maker in emails that are to colleagues. You could nominate a colleague for an award and then email them to say, hey, just FYI, I nominated you. I hope that you win. Whoa, you've just totally made their day. You could refer a client to a colleague, help them make some money. That's a serious day maker move. So share in the comments and I want to read and see what are some ways that you could be a day maker through your emails. There's so many great ways. ones in the chat. Yes. People are lighting that up. And I have to say, um, when you have the attitude of this email, if you're a coach, this email is my first step in the coaching process. Like I look at marketing, what we write, what we send out is the first opportunity to help them, whether they're paying or not. And thinking that. of it, like I'm about to make somebody's day. That's like total uplifting instead of feeling nervous. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you continually remind yourself through my emails, whether I'm emailing one person individually or whether I'm emailing a mailing list with 10 or 50 or 100 or a million people, my goal is to be a day maker. How can I make someone's day today? How could I make their day better than it was before? happier, stronger, less stressful? How could I help someone feel less alone? How could I spread inspiration and hope and positivity? And you can do this in every email that you send. And when you adopt this attitude, it changes how you write, it changes your confidence levels, it definitely changes how people respond to your emails because they start to realize, oh my gosh, these are the best emails I'm getting all week. I can't wait for your next email and people start to look forward to your email rather than ignoring them, yeah? So become a day maker and come up with creative ways to do this. And then lastly, so one other reason why I think people get really stuck when it comes to writing emails or anything else is lack of purpose, lack of intention, lack of clarity about why are you emailing in the first place? So if you're trying to compose an email, but you're not even really clear on what you're saying, why you're saying it, what you're asking them to do, you're feeling a little vague and murky, then obviously that email is gonna be difficult to write and it's gonna be very confusing to receive. So there's a very simple cure for this. It's simply that before you start typing out the email, you just need to take a minute, take a minute, take a breath, gather your thoughts and set a clear intention for this email. And those of you who've taken classes with me in the past, you've probably heard my feel, no do process. It's really simple and I'll teach it to you right now. So I'm sitting down, I'm about to start composing an email. Before I start typing, I'm gonna take a minute, I'm gonna set my intention. So I think about my email recipient. 
I think about that person who's about to receive this email or this newsletter. And I ask myself, okay, what do I want this person to feel? What do I want this person to know? And what do I want this person to do? What do I want them to feel? What's the emotion that I want to evoke? Do I want them to feel hopeful? Do I want them to feel inspired? Do I want them to feel entertained? Do I want them to feel fired up, determined? What do I want them to feel? First decide that. What do I want them to know? What's the information or the message that I want to convey? And there's a tendency here to often try to cram in way too much information and overwhelm your recipient. So a good question is, what's the main thing I want them to know? Or what's the main thing for today that I want them to know? And then what do I want them to do? What's the next step? What's the call to action? What am I actually asking of them? Do I want them to make a deposit right now to enroll for my program? Do I want them to schedule a call to speak with me and talk about working together? Do I want them to sign up for a free class? Do I want them to share this with a friend? What do I want them to do right now? And if this sounds really simple, it is. <laughs> it is really simple. The issue is that most of us rush into writing and we just forget to do this. We forget to take a moment, take a breath, set an intention, organize your thoughts. If you take five minutes to do this exercise, feel, no do, and actually write down or type what your feel, no do is going to be, this then sets you up for success with your email. You're going to be able to compose that email beautifully, fluidly, quickly, because you've already set your game plan and you know what you're doing. You're going into it purposefully rather than feeling kind of vague. Yeah? So write down feel, no do on a sticky note or in your journal or notebook. Put it near your computer so the next time you're about to write an email, a newsletter, a blog post, a podcast script, whatever, before you start writing, you take that five second moment to figure out what do I want them to feel, know, and do, establish that, and then start writing. Your writing will immediately become clearer and stronger. Word. <laughs> Word. I have used that for years. It is, yes. I use it before creating programs. I use it before giving speeches. I give it before you know, I have difficult conversations. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a framework for everything. It helps you get super clear. So. So true. And what I love about feel, no, do is it's really simple to remember. It's easy to do. You just have to remember to do it. And like you said, Susan, you can use feel, no, do before you're crafting your TEDx talk, before you have a tricky conversation with your child or spouse. It's just a way of setting an intention so that you're using your words purposefully and with great care and love instead of just sauntering into the room and flapping your trap <laughs> without, without any thought as to what it is that you're saying. So feel no do is a game changer. And I do have a free workbook on this topic, on the feel no do topic that I would be totally happy to share with you guys if you want to dive into that in a little more depth. Yes. yes, who doesn't want a free workbook from Alex, right? <laughs> yes, says Joey. <laughs> I'm writing down as we go along, like things to send to you. So I'll make sure that you get all this stuff. <laughs> so Alex, what are three common mistakes we might be making when we're writing our emails? Okay, let's talk about it. <laughs> so I'm one of those people where I try, you know, I don't like the word mistake because it's all a growth process, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah. messing some stuff up. Yes, here are some things that perhaps you might want to avoid doing. So number one, very common mistake that I see all the time, really harkens back to what we were just talking about a moment ago. Number one mistake, you forgot to set a clear intention. You forgot to set an intention. You forgot to figure out why am I even writing this email and what is it that I want them to do? So again, easily corrected. All you need to do is remind yourself before you start composing the email, take a minute, take a beat, take a breath, 
decide what do I want them to feel, what do I want them to know, what do I want them to do, decide those three components, write down some notes, then begin composing your email and you will have a much better time. It will immediately be clearer and be more likely to lead to the results that you want. So number one mistake, whoops, <laughs> you forgot to set an intention. I would say number two mistake is that your email is too long. It's way too long. And I wanna be clear, I'm not one of those people who says like, your email must be 100 words or less. There's no rigid rules as to what the word count should be, but in general, less is more, and the more brief you can be, the better. So you wanna share minimal information, be you know, the least wordy that you can be, and if there's more information that you wanna convey, that's a great opportunity to include a link to a video, include a link to a web page, include a link to where people can go to see more. But don't try to cram all the information into one email. It's just too overwhelming. Again, remember what we talked about at the beginning of this class. We are in a moment in time when people are exceptionally stressed, overwhelmed, distracted, mental power pulled in so many directions. So part of being a day maker means respecting people's time and being as brief as you possibly can so that your email is a delight to read rather than a chore to read. <laughs> and learning to write in a brief manner is absolutely a skill and it's an, it's an artistic skill. It takes practice, it takes time. Maybe it doesn't immediately come easily to you, but it's something you can learn. So email is way, way, way too long is another mistake that I observe quite a lot. Another mistake that I observe, particularly when it comes to something that you are selling, you are selling your book, you're selling your product, you're selling your coaching program, you're selling your consulting package, your graphic design services, whatever it may be, a big mistake that I observe is that in your email, you are emphasizing the process rather than the benefits process rather than benefits. So I see many people launch into an email and they say something like, hey, sign up for my coaching program. You get 12 coaching sessions and they're each 45 minutes long and you get a 72 page ebook and you get 14 audio files and the program is 32 days and it's 997. Okay, <laughs> like that's a lot of information, but what do I actually gain from hiring you? Like I don't actually care if the ebook is 72 pages or 17 pages. Those are sort of unnecessary details. What I care about is how am I gonna feel? What am I gonna gain? What results am I gonna get? So I strongly advise you to start by talking about the benefits of hiring you. Here's what you'll gain from working with me. Here's what you'll have at the end of these 12 weeks together. Get them excited about those benefits and then tell them all the logistical information later. What I see too often is the reverse. People get so excited about the, the package that they've put together that they launch with all those logistical details. They state that first when that's not really what your client is interested in at first. Does that make sense? So benefits first, then logistical details second. That one little flip will make your emails so much stronger immediately. So remember that. Benny's first. <laughs> Put that in a post-it note. <laughs> Susan, is this something that you observe with some of your clients as well? Yeah, and even I stumble with this sometimes, that I get so excited about like how much time they get with me or us and like all the bells and whistles. And I and really what is what you're saying is important. Like they want to know, can this person solve my problem? Can Alexandra Franzen help me write? emails that are going to deliver lots of money to my PayPal. Yes yeah. or no. Then you can get into like how many times we're going to meet and all that kind of stuff. So right. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And again, like I, I do not believe in rigid rules when it comes to writing. Writing is a space for creativity. You can bring your own stamp to things. So please know that these are just general guidelines. Of course, there's exceptions to every rule. 
there might be a particular offer where it makes sense to open by stating how much one-on-one -on -one time they get with you because that's like a juicy, exciting aspect of the offer. So there are times where you'll want to do things in a different way, but generally speaking, when you're trying to sell something, you want to sell people on the benefits first. Let them know what you're going to gain, what you're going to learn, how you're going to feel at the end, what you'll walk away with, and then tell them when the classes are happening and how long they are and if it's on Zoom and all those logistical details. Make that the secondary part of your message. And by the way, I would say that goes for an email, that goes for a newsletter, that goes for a web page, that goes for a video, that goes for anywhere where you might be selling an offer. Yeah, makes sense? So, oh, somebody asks in the comments, do examples like testimonials count as describing benefits? It certainly could. That's certainly one way to convey the benefits. Many different creative ways to convey benefits. You can do it in a testimonial, you can do it in a video, you can do it in a bullet point list. That's where your creativity and artistry comes into play. But overall, you want to state the benefits first. So one last thing, I know I said I was going to share three mistakes, but I'm actually going to share four. Bonus, <laughs> bonus mistake <laughs> for all of you guys. So, okay, I would say everything I just said, set that aside for a moment. Really, the absolute biggest mistake, my dog Zuki just came downstairs because he agrees with me, the biggest mistake that I see when it comes to emails and email marketing is trying to attain perfection and therefore spinning your wheels, nitpicking, editing for hours or days or weeks, and never actually clicking send. That is the biggest mistake. The biggest mistake is allowing yourself to get so mired in perfectionism that you never send the damn email. <laughs> That is the ultimate mistake because you are then cutting yourself off from potential opportunities, from new clients, from income that you really want. So yes, you should set an intention. Yes, you should strive to be brief. Yes, you should state your benefits before logistics. Do your best to be a day maker. But at the end of the day, you ultimately just have to set a time limit of like, okay, I'm gonna work on this email for 30 more minutes and that is it. After 30 minutes, I'm deciding it's not perfect. It never will be. I'm sending it anyway. I'm terrified. Doesn't matter. Here we go. <laughs> because you just have to set that limit in the sand. Otherwise, you will spin your wheels indefinitely until the end of time, and you will never do the brave thing. So that is the biggest mistake, and that's what I really want everyone here to stop doing. Go for done rather than perfect, because you will never reach perfection. And I also want to mention a lot of the people that you admire greatly, people who are successful, who are releasing books, who are running podcasts, who are launching incredible programs, who are making six and seven and eight figures, their emails are not perfect. Miss Susan Hyatt, her emails are full of typos all the time. It's usually my fault. <laughs> and you know what? No. She's killing it. <laughs> so let, let this be a reminder to you that Perfection is not the point. That's not what we're aiming towards. What we're aiming for is, did I set a clear intention? Am I trying to be a day maker? Am I sending something that is probably going to make at least one person's day better than it was before? Make that your new criteria for success and find that courage to be scared of sending the email and do it anyway because that is really what you need to do in order to get things moving in the direction you want in your business and life. Would you agree with that, Susan? Yeah, I would totally agree with that. It's one of the biggest points that I preach when I'm teaching is just that it doesn't matter how many wonderful ideas you have. It doesn't matter um, all the programs, all the content you create. If it stays on your hard drive and it doesn't actually reach the people, who cares, right? So right. what did you send out this week? That's what I want to know. So totally, totally. yeah. And it's, it's good to remember too, that the people that you admire greatly make mistakes as well. There was, I think it was during his first presidential campaign, President Obama and his marketing team 
bought like a huge banner or like a spread in a newspaper that had a huge typo in it in giant letters. The president, you know? <laughs> so, you know, even people that you admire tremendously, there's gonna be a typo, there's gonna be a broken link, there's gonna be an issue. People are human, it's okay. Just keep moving forward, keep marching forward. And if your intention is in the right place, that's ultimately what people will feel from your email. They won't notice or care about the typo, at least most people won't. What they will feel is the humanity, the generosity, the warmth, the care, all the love that you poured into that email, and that's what they'll remember. Totally. Yeah. Now, Alex, I think we should tell them, we have a couple of different things to tell them. Yes. Um, one is before we introduce the email course, let's talk about what they can expect for the rest of the week because we have so much fun stuff planned for all y'all um, today through Friday. Yes, so exciting. Okay, right. so as you may or may not remember, depending on how quickly you skimmed the email <laughs> that you got, because <laughs> we know it's only 13 seconds, we have three mini classes coming up Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of this week. Each class is a different topic. They're with me. I will teach you a skill in each class, a skill that you can implement and use right away. And they're all gonna be 15 minutes long. So these are like little lightning sessions, perfect for super busy people. And they are going to be live and I believe recorded as well. I think yeah. we are planning in. Okay, perfect. So the first mini class, 15 minute class, is happening tomorrow, Wednesday, and it is how to write an email to invite a potential client to hire you. How to write an email to invite someone to hire you. That is something that you definitely need to know how to do. <laughs> so who doesn't want to know that? Like doesn't want to know that exactly. Get your ass in there, y'all. <laughs> So I will cover that with you. This is actually one of my favorite things to talk about and teach. I love talking about this because much like Susan Hyatt, I am a really, really big fan of human beings, especially women, making money. Yes. <laughs> making more money so that we can change the world and in so many incredible ways. So we're going to talk about how to write an email to invite someone to hire you. Class number two, mini class number two, which is happening on Thursday, we're going to talk about how to write an exciting newsletter that generates lots of sales. So in the first class, we're talking about more how to write a personal email to a potential client, like a one-on-one -on -one email. In the second class, we're talking about how to write a newsletter that's going out to a mailing list maybe a list of 10 people, maybe a list of 1,000 people, maybe 10,000 or whatever amount you have, how to sell something. And then class number three, I'm excited about this one, on Friday, finishing the week with a bang, I'm gonna teach you how to write a last chance, time's running out message to motivate people to purchase right now but without sounding gross and pushy. <laughs> and this is kind of a delicate dance, right? Because sometimes you need to let people know, hey, TikTok, this is genuinely the last day to sign up and you wanna build some urgency and get people signing up right now, but you don't wanna be gross about it, right? <laughs> so we're gonna talk about how to strike that fine line of being enthusiastic and welcoming and letting people know that there genuinely is a time limit, but in a way that's graceful and encouraging and where you're still being a day maker rather than a day ruiner <laughs> through <laughs> your email. So that's what we're gonna talk about on Friday. And I am so excited about Friday. All I will actually be there Friday. Oh, so, good. Um, so these are 15 minute classes. You're going to learn how to get someone to hire you, how to write a newsletter and how to do a time's running out last chance without being gross and icky. Exactly. That's worth a million trillion dollars. <laughs> um, and it's all yours for free. Amazing. Now, Here's what's not free, and this is what we are actually selling, which I'm always upfront about. You can sign up now, uh, which I highly encourage you to do, but we will be um, accepting enrollments 
uh, for the next week or so. But we have an email class with Yay. the beautiful Alexandra Franzen because email should be exciting and not exhausting. Um, let me tell you something before I get into this. Alex is going to be sharing with you examples of actual emails that have generated hundreds of thousands of dollars for my company and other people's companies. Like for example, there's an ultimate email that we sent out one email and made over a hundred thousand dollars off of one email. Pretty much every retreat I've ever done has sold out off of one email she's written. So you definitely are going to get some goodies in these free 15 minute classes. The real juju is happening in this email course. Um, and just here's some refreshers. Do any of these sound like ring a bell with you? There's an opportunity you really want, but you don't know how to write about it and you feel stuck. You feel like people ignore your emails because you're either boring or pushy. I know I have felt both of those things. Mm -hmm. um, or certain emails make you feel awkward or your inbox feels disorganized and overwhelming. Alex is the remedy. Look at the <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so cute. <laughs> Inspiring, uplifting email writing class on planet Earth. Aww. Listen, we're not playing around with this. Um, so if you wanna become a strong, competent email writer, this is the class for you. If you wanna grow braver, ask with more confidence, get more of whatever you want, spend way less time dealing with emails. Hallelujah. Holy cow. Confidently handle tricky email situations. Oh my God, I'm gonna to have to chime in on that part because I get Mallory who's on this as our right hand on this knows. Anyone who's taken a peek at my email box knows you gotta handle these things gracefully. We can teach you how and how to have a whole new attitude about email, right? We explained to you the amazing results first. We did it right. Now we're gonna <laughs> talk about what's included. 40 time-saving, life-changing email templates. Listen, I've looked through those email templates and I'm just like, honest to God, like you could just pay for that download and be a happy camper. Um, but in addition to that, you do get three video live classes with the beautiful Alex. You get three co-working dates with you, Alex. Yes, I'm super excited about those. We're going to have a push send party where everybody gets together, same time, all together, and all at the exact same moment, three, two, one, click. We all click send on like that one email that you've been hesitating to send. So there's gonna be community power and excitement. Everybody's in it to win it together. It's gonna be so dope. And that's just one of the co-working dates. The others are amazing too. What? I'm gonna have to come to the push send. I'm gonna have to come up with something outrageous to email. Oh my gosh, you're gonna email Michelle Obama. Send. Michelle <laughs> Obama. Yes. Yes, I love um, it. I, what are we talking about? Why is this slide here? I don't, uh, this is me in my hot pink suit. <laughs> you look great. The six. <laughs> oh, 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 if you remember, I know why. <laughs> if you are one of my mastermind members, you get this experience as part of the mastermind. So I think Mallory's probably going to drop a link. If you're not part of the mastermind, you might want to become one. Mm -hmm. um, so here is the link. If you want to go ahead and get started already enrolled in the email class, you can still come to all the free stuff. Um, this is what it looks like to get enrolled. And I think we have some pretty exciting it's the whole thing is $495. Now, listen, I know y'all spending $495 on shoes, on purses, on makeup, on um, your kids high end soccer camp. You can have a three pay on this. And I think we came up with something where we, you could put $95 down. Is that right, Mallory? There's something cry cry. I can't hear you, Mallory, if you're talking to me. Oh, I was typing. Um, we held off on that for now, but we may introduce that at a later date. So if someone needs, like, wants to explore that plan, they can message us privately and we'll get with them on it. 
Okay. Yes. And, and I want to chime in and, on the pricing and say, you know, my intention as the creator of this program is that you get, you gain so much from this program, all of the email templates, all of the training that the, like, you know, you send a couple of emails to invite clients to hire you. And within the first week or so, you've already earned back that 495 plus five times more. That's my goal for you. I really want this to be like just a fabulous high ROI investment in yourself. And my hope is that those 40 email templates that you receive, you're gonna use them for years to come. So there's emails to ask people to hire you. There's emails to follow up with clients who have mysteriously disappeared to get them to confirm. There's emails to announce you're raising your rates. There's emails, I added some new ones for 2020, emails to announce your new COVID-19 policies, emails to announce your new commitment to being an anti-racist business. I mean, emails for literally everything you can possibly imagine so that hopefully it'll save you tons of time, save you tons of energy, and make you tons of money <laughs> in the process. And my deepest hope is that you will just gain such a confidence boost from this class and you will begin to realize, I am a day maker. My emails can be the brightest spark in someone's day. I can be that person who writes excellent, wonderful, uplifting emails that people look forward to receiving and get into that mode where you're confidently, courageously sending emails and getting huge wins from the process. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, this is a no brainer. The program starts in September, right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. So the way it works is we're, the program is basically going September 1 through September 25. To be clear, all the templates, all the materials are yours to keep forever. So you get all that stuff forever. The between September 1 and 25, that's when the live interactive classes with me are happening. The get it done co-working parties are happening. That's where some of the live stuff is happening in between that span of dates but all of that will be recorded too. So even if you're super slammed busy in September and you just can't show up for those sessions, you can watch them later. You can do it in October, November. It won't be exactly the same, but it'll be almost the same as the live experience. So what, $500, like the push send is worth $500. I mean, come on. I'm so excited about this push send because it's like healthy peer pressure. Mm hmm. Yes, I'm very excited about it as well. So yeah, I would love to see as many of you as possible in the email class. It is going to be so much fun. It's going to be super helpful. I genuinely am obsessed with emails and I'm excited <laughs> to help you become to fall in love with emails and to view it as an art project to view it as a beautiful part of your week instead of a tedious chore. I'm really excited to help you. And art project. I love you, Alex. Thank you for all of your genius today. And um, for all of you that are here, come for your 15 minute lessons for the rest of the week. This is such a kind, generous offer Alex is doing for us. Um, Silver Fox, I'm going to quiz you when you get home what you learned. Um, yes, you can go ahead and sign up now. And we will see you on the flip side. I just want to make sure, uh, Mallory, we're not missing any questions that you want us to cover or that have come up in the chat. Yeah. Um, really, honestly, I just want to let everyone know because there were some questions. We'll work on trying to get the mini class videos off of Facebook. Since the group is private, it really doesn't let us pull from there. Um, but mm -hmm. I'll see what I can do and work some magic. But um we did discuss a prize which we'll announce tomorrow it will not be the writing class so don't hold off and like think oh my, i might win you know this from this um but we're looking at having um an email that, a couple emails that you'll win that are pre-written that you won't get with the writing class so um, yeah it's gonna be fun so make sure you join rich coach club and I'm just going to say it. I just really quick went in and created a $95 payment plan down. So there's the link if someone awesome. is wanting to do it. Awesome. 95 bucks. Listen, I know y'all going out to non-COVID approved dinner spending that. Y'all <laughs> out there with no face mask, eating, 
and charging up more than that. So get oh your money in the class. You crack me up, Susan. Okay, so just to seal up this class with a big, shiny, beautiful blue bow, I would love to hear in the comments, what is the main thing that you gained from class today? What's the main thing you gained? Maybe it's just that idea of, oh my gosh, I can be a day maker. That's my new motto in life. I'm gonna be a day maker through my emails, through my newsletters. Maybe the main thing you gained is, yo, I just need to take a minute and set my intention. Feel, know, do before I start writing. Maybe your main realization from class today is I am a perfectionist and I really need to work on that. I need to figure out how to set a time limit so that I stop spinning my wheels and start sending those emails and making some money. <laughs> so share the main thing that you gained from class today. I wanna see. And, and then we will wrap this up and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, just press send, be a day maker. Yes, I love that. I know the day maker concept is huge for me too. Be there a were a lot of people that said feel no do before you started looking. Feel no do, eliminate distractions. Yes, oh my gosh. If you can just clear your space, protect your mind, you will automatically become a better writer. Absolutely. Be a day maker and do it imperfectly. I think that's a perfect note to end on. Thanks so much for sharing, you guys. It is a joy to be with you here today. I'll see y'all tomorrow and Thursday and Friday and maybe even in the email class as well. Thank you so, so much. Thank yeah. you so much, you guys. Have a great night. Thanks, Mallory.